Ladies, gentlemen, and the rest of you, hello, welcome. Uh, something exciting has gone down in the last year or two, and I wanted to share it with people. Uh, basically, I've been hearing people, you know, talk about AI and the different fun things that have been going on, but a lot of the times when people talk about it, it involves having to install uh, Linux on a computer, having a separate computer for it. It's a lot of fiddling, and it's difficult and kind of hard. But uh, what Google's done is they've made something, I think, ostensibly for students and researchers. However, it's open to the public for free. It's called Google Colab. And what it does is it runs Python notebooks. Uh, they give you a free virtual machine. Um, it can run off of uh, GPU if you need to do something with a GPU. Or uh, you can also just do the normal uh, CPU. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on GPU. Um, what this does is it allows you to kind of dive in and play around with some of these notebooks and things that people have posted because you'll see, you know, things on Tumblr or Medium or some other site where they're talking about, oh, we can do this fancy new thing with AI, we can replace faces, yada, yada, yada. In this case, I wanted to show you guys how to colorize old photos using this particular uh, image colorizer collab.ipynb. I'll post it in the uh, show description. Um, so when you first open this up, it looks like it's just a document, right? And it's confusing because you're like, I don't know where the start button is. Well, I'll show you. Uh, when you're going down, it'll give you all the instructions here. It'll tell you sometimes different information about setup. But what you do is, is when you hover over these little uh, brackets, it's got a little play button. And you go ahead and hit play. And what that's going to do, it'll run the code next to it. And uh, again, parts of this code will be in kind of standard... Um, uh, code for like a Linux machine. Uh, this is like a particularly this is a command you could just type into a command line and then get a result on a normal Linux machine. But in this case uh, you get down to other sections like this and it is full-on Python. Um, so basically all you have to do to run these if you want to see how they function is just go down through hit play on all of them um, and it'll start knocking it out. Um, you'll see the updates here. It'll tell you what's going on with the actual installation process. Sometimes you'll see errors, because uh, again, this is something that's been written by a person. So as things are upgraded and updated over time, sometimes these things break. But most of the ones I've found, I've been successful in just being able to play and not had an issue. Okay, looks like we're almost done with all that. Okay, instructions, source URL, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So, uh, over here you can already see what it's asking for. It wants a source URL, and then the factor render, and then a watermark. Uh, you can turn the watermark off here. Um, these are all different depending on what you're running, and it also depends on how user-friendly they've made it. This one's super easy though, so we're going to go ahead and dive in. Uh, let's say uh, we're going to take this uh, image of uh, <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt. I can remember that. Uh, and uh, you just copy the URL and go back in. And you're going to paste that right there. And then you hit play. And it will take a moment. Um, in this case, you can actually change the render factor to different settings. Because uh, as you'll find going through the different ones, some of them have better reactions to less and more. And you have different levels of how good it will look at the end. Um, you also have the option down here to kind of do a loop where it'll go through all of them. But I haven't really noticed that to be too helpful for much. Uh, we'll go ahead and let this one kind of run here. And here we go. We have a colorized Theodore Roosevelt. There he is. Uh, this is all AI colorization. Um, this is a specific... Uh, uh, you can see some odd artifacts here and some other things. Uh, basically what they did is they fed a bunch of images of people to this and then got a result um, from the machine. So this is just what the machine's guessing. These aren't even near correct colors. So, let's go ahead and try a different one now. Um, I'm going to do a very old picture here. This is the um, Eiffel Tower. And uh, just to give you a little background on this, if you go to the Library of Congress, you can actually search a bunch of old public domain images. Uh, these are all housed at the Library of Congress. Some of them are available to download. Some of them are not available. Uh, when you go through the search results, you can find that usually with a little checkbox they have right there. So if you see a whole list and you think these are all great, but you start clicking through and find you can't do a bunch of them, just click right there. And that way, you know that anything you click on will actually give you ready and easy access to the images in question. So, let's go ahead and do this one. 
Uh, we've got that. All right, looks great. Gonna go ahead and copy up there. And let's go back over here. And control F, da -da, paste. And run that. And this one should be a little bit faster than the other one. Perfect. Uh, that was real time. You can see that it's already kicked out a result. Uh, it's pretty fascinating. Since that one's so quick, I'm actually gonna go ahead and run this through the, uh, the guy that takes a little while. And I will go ahead and pause, and then I'll show you the results when we come back. Okay, and you can see here that it went through and rendered it out at different factor levels. Um, this one doesn't seem to have too drastic of changes over time. Um, it actually looks a little more desaturated as it goes through, to my eye at least. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit more fun. Uh, we've been doing mostly people. I'm curious to see what it's actually going to make of these fish. Uh, let's try that. Wow, I did not expect it to even get close to correct on that. That looks like raw fish. That looks kind of like a nightmare in her hand, but everything down there you can tell is fish. Even in the reflection you can tell it's fish. Um, and all of this is AI generated, which is just completely mind-blowing to me. Uh, this one's more fun. Uh, it's also an action shot. I'm curious what it's going to make of the ground and the people in the background, because I think that as it starts losing definition, it's probably not going to actually see that those are women or humans uh, in the background. So I have a feeling they're going to come out black and white. Oh wow, that's impressive. Uh, it actually did recognize that those are human beings in the background and colorized at least this lady a little bit. This one's a little bit more diffused, uh, or desaturated, excuse me. Um, but you can also recognize some of the limitations of AI in this case. Uh, it's neat to see that they've added color back into the faces and kind of added some contrast and details. However, these ladies, I think, are on different teams. Because this lady has a stripe, and this lady has a dark stripe. And they both look like they have the same color bottoms, which might be correct, but I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure that they were probably color coordinated as different teams. So, there you go. Um, if you'd like to play with this, I will put the uh, address for this particular collab down in the description. Um, but just as a little example here, there are tons of them out there. You just got to Google uh, for a Google collab, um, and you can do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, they have Picks to Picks, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is the one where it makes fake images. Um, so yeah, you can go through and play it. Uh, some of them will take a significant period of time. So that is one limitation you run into with using Google Colab, because it can only run for 12 hours. Uh, so if you're doing some of the more advanced stuff that's trying to make like fake music, or uh, some of the stuff that's like a, a careful face replacement, unless you're talking really low resolution, you're going to wind up with it taking an extremely long time. And they have the option to do Pro, um, and I actually did sign up for that, but I noticed that by Pro, what they mean is, is you just get slightly, slightly better access. It'll still get disconnected all on its own after a period of about 12 hours to 6 hours, in my experience. So, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do more videos like this, but um, I just wanted to try out my new uh, streaming setup. And I hope everyone has a great day and has some fun playing around with uh, the Library of Congress images and uh, Google Colab.